What's up boys? Welcome back to another private lesson. Today we have uh, our first non-TVP actually. We're gonna have Jeff against uh, Jon Snow. Now Jeff uploaded this replay. This game was actually played in a DreamHack NA Masters I believe. So definitely pretty high caliber. Uh, Jeff didn't have too much to say about this match. He just said he lost the medalists, which uh, that's honestly a complaint I get a lot. So this is probably going to be uh, pretty relatable for you guys as well. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what MMR these guys are exactly. They're they're definitely at least 6k on, on NA, probably on, on Europe as well. So, um, yeah, it's probably going to be a pretty good match. And to be honest, uh, I, of course, I, I don't know exactly how this game is going to go, but just, just to hear that uh, it was about Mutalisk made me interested because it, even a lot of pro Terrans asked me about this. It's um, Muta seemed to be the new trouble from Zerg players making our lives hard, you know. So let's see, uh, let's see what, what mistakes we can find here and help you guys uh, improve a little bit against Mutalisk. So, so far, so good. We just opened with a... Barracks first Reaper expand. Or actually, it was a it was a gas first. Looks like. Just knows how more proxy Rex is very legit. We appreciate that. Definitely proxy here. If you meet them in a tournament, he won't see it. Gotta gotta use this to my advantage. You know, I'm pretending to analyze the replay, but in reality, I'm, I'm just checking where I can proxy Rex it when I play him in a tournament. Yeah, this seems a little bit too far, doesn't it? So maybe we'll build it here. Okay, yeah, let's see. Good shit, boys. No SCV scout from Jaffa. Makes sense because um, he played gas first. Like I always say, it's going to be a little bit too expensive. I feel like you, the gas was a bit delayed for some reason. Like I'm pretty sure you can start your reactor right away normally. So maybe you forgot to take it for like five seconds or something. Reactor going down. I wonder if we're gonna see some uh, something aggressive as opener. Like I feel like gas first is usually in, in both TVP and uh, and TVZ. If you open gas first, it's usually more like for a timing, you know, or not not necessarily a timing, but some kind of specific build. Like you want to get tech fast, and you're sacrificing economy for it. So usually, if you do this, uh, you you kind of want to hit a good timing. Uh, if you don't do that all gas first, it does make you a little bit more poor, I guess. So, definitely expecting something here out of JF. Yeah, so far nothing really happened so far. Didn't didn't really manage to do any damage with the Reaper. That's also a negative side effect, by the way, of gas first. Your Reaper arrives just a little bit later. Normally on a small map, your Reaper has like... 15 seconds to play around, you know, try to get a drone, try to get a ling, uh, try to get a creep tumor. But if you do a gas first reaper, your reaper actually doesn't have that much time. So their their early game is just going to be a little bit stronger. Like, what well, one creep tumor snipe, a drone snipe, or, or killing some lings, all those things matter. So, yeah, you're going to have to take uh, that into account as well if you play a gas first. Obviously, those hellions are super fast. Actually, what I do a lot when I... Uh, I don't really do gas first anymore, but when I did it, I would like to go fast Hellion run by a cruiser Because I feel like if you do damage early on, uh, a battle cruiser follow is pretty strong. Actually, kind of looks like he is going for the run by. Okay. Yeah, to be honest... Uh, if you see... <laughs> Maybe later. Mr. Marine Lord. Uh, let me go back a little bit to show you guys what I want to talk about. If you see... This with your Hellions. With your, if you do the 4 Hellion run by, like I actually like this build. 4 Hellion run by is not bad, but if you see that they are in, in any way prepared, I would probably not go for it. Like 4 Hellions is not a high amount. If you lose one Hellion to the Lynx and another Hellion gets damaged, your hellions are not really going to do any damage anymore so this, this this build this strategy i feel like you really only do it when you go in and you see they're undefended because that's the point this hits really fast and it hits uh you know at a timing when zerg usually doesn't have zerglings 
But if you see they actually do have 10 ish Zerglings, then it's it's really risky to win. Like the moment I saw this, I, I, I probably thought you were gonna back off, and that's probably what you should have done. Maybe you're gonna get damage still, but this four Hellion super fast attack is actually um, just meant to catch the Zerg of Guard when they have no Zerglings and do damage, pretty much. Like if you see Zergling, it's very risky to go for it. Like, yeah, you actually ended up losing um, two Hellions to it. They might be able to get some drones still. Like, not, 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 not too bad, honestly. The damage is okay, but it could have gone even worse. And uh, yeah, that was that was honestly very risky. Once you sell those Zerglings, probably would have preferred you to back up and go again with like eight Hellions or, or a bigger wave at least. Maybe sync it up with that Banshee. Like, uh, that's actually the thing with Hellion runbys is that the, the 6 Hellion runby has been really predictable for a while. And uh, very, like, widely used, I guess. A lot of people do that. That I always try to mess them up by doing different kinds of Hellion runbys. Like the 4 Hellion runby, for example. Or the 8 Hellion runby. Because if you do the 8 Hellion one, and they just have Zerglings for the, for the 6 Hellions, it's not going to be enough for 8 Hellions, you know. So you have to try to go around that problem a bit of them having exactly enough zerglings for, for six hellions so in this case backing off and going it in with eight would have been a pretty good choice but you did get the how much drones was it five drones like it's it's okay it's uh, it's acceptable I, I would i would say you're a little bit behind maybe he did get supply block though so that's gonna even things up a little bit and here is the building of doom the spire Oh wait, what is this? I didn't even see the decal. Look at the decal. <laughs> like, I tried to zoom it to the spire, but it looked more like I was zooming it to the decal. So eventually going in. Personally, uh, I'm not really a Cloak Banshee fan. I think uh, Cloak Banshee is just good if someone goes Roaches. Nowadays, everyone goes really fast spy uh, really fast Lair. Because they want to go really fast Spire, right? So... They can always make an overseer and just chase the banshees down and stuff. I I I personally think it's pretty hard to get damage done with banshees. I I do the opener sometimes. It's good to have in your uh, list of build orders, and it's really good against roach openers. But you know, if, if you do banshee, I feel like most of the times you're gonna have to set up for being a little bit behind. Getting another five drones here. Once again, not 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 too bad. Could have been uh, could have been worse. And actually, the, the income is looking pretty good for you here. Uh, only being 10 drones behind and he just finished 5 of those. That's actually a pretty good situation for a TVZ, I would say. So, in the end, not too bad. Uh, I think you did see the, the Spire, right? Okay. Now, one thing that I think is very important against the Spire is that... You want to switch out of tanks basically instantly. Uh, well, I would recommend to make at least 2. But after that, you do need to go out of uh, out of siege tanks immediately. The way I do it is, uh, I just lift this one away, get a reactor on it, uh, make a fifth gas. Oh, this is kind of annoying actually. I didn't think this thing was gonna do any damage. It's just two SCVs, not too bad. Uh, this is something I'm really not a big fan of. You you threw away eight Hellions for drones, like you literally sacrificed. 800 minerals in army units for a bunch of drones and then pushing out uh yeah not 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 the smartest move for sure like this 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 doesn't even look like an army to me i don't know what he has does he have he doesn't have speed but he does have like eight mutas somewhere yeah there we go like th this army is actually actually nothing at all I, I i hope you're gonna go back here starting to look a bit dicey okay running back so actually, besides that, like like I said, switching to mine is really important. These extra tanks are definitely a mistake, I think. Like, tanks are not just not that useful against the hyper-mobile Zerg. And mines are actually good. Mines allow you to push you. The thing is, if you just want to AFK and sit there, uh, which is not the best way to play TVZ, to be honest. But if you want to do that, then... Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so your army's just going to get crushed here. You do get a nice hit on the Bailings, but obviously not a good trade. But like I said, if you just want to sit there and do nothing, you can just make tanks. But if you want to have any kind of presence on the map, you're going to have to make mines. Not only do tank armies not trade well against Lingbane Muda at all. 
Um, also, if you move out, it's they can just run by so easily because you... Like, Widow Mines... Uh, uh, one Widow Mine is very dangerous for Link Bermuda. One tank is not dangerous. If you run by a big Link Bane army... Uh, good splits, by the way. If you run by, an, uh, run by a Link Bane army and there's one tank, you're not scared of it. You just kill it. Against Mines, you actually need to split and stuff. It, it, it becomes a bit scarier. So, you, you, you won't be able to defend run buys that well with well playing tanks. And you also can't push out, really. So, it's... Because your your army loses in a fight, that's what makes it really tough. So those extra tanks you make definitely a mistake. Another point is that if you play against Ling Bane Muda, and like this game you didn't have a good timing, so especially this game because you lost eight Hellions. Those two tanks they can actually help you defend against Banelings a little bit. Uh, for example. Uh, well, this map, this maps are pretty tough to be honest. So this map is not the greatest example. Let's say you take the third base here, right? You wall off this, and you can put a tank here to deal with the bailings. That that's the best way to use the tank against Ling Bay Muda. Like those pushes with the tanks, like I said later on, don't really work. Even if it becomes a late game, or a, let's say a longer game, ten minutes, you're both on one sixty supply or whatever. If you have those tanks alive, you still don't take them with your push. You will just uh, put them here to assist, maybe get a shot on the bailings if they run by. Obviously assisted by mines and marines that you have from your reinforcements. But don't, don't use those to push. If you're playing as Ling Bane Muda, just uh, keep the tanks you have at home. They don't really contribute in the main fight anyway. So, uh, yeah. The way I do it. This, this is a really good move, by the way. I'm going to I'm gonna talk about this uh, in a little bit. So this, the setup you have is, imagine you have a fourth base. You can put one tank here with a third next to it. And one tank here with a third next to it. And it's going to help you a little bit more in dealing with bailing runways, right? Like, the, don't push with those tanks against Ling Bane Buddha, it, it, uh, it's not ideal. So, the way you did it, uh, and, and th th that's not the way I do it, and I'm gonna explain why I don't like this, is that it's 10 minutes already. You, you lost a ton of units, you could have been at like 170 supply or whatever. And you still don't have a single Widow Mine, because you, you made tanks from, from the Tech Lab one, and you made the upgrade there, instead of making this one, flying this one to make a reactor, and building another factory on the empty tech lab. That, that's, the, that's the best way to do it. If you fly this one to a reactor, you're gonna have a lot of mines, even if you don't have the drilling class upgrade, they're still gonna be invisible with the armory. They're still gonna be very dangerous to the Zerg army. And you, you, you just need those. Like Without the Widow Mines, you, you can't really do anything. He can he can just A-move his army on top of you at all times, and it's gonna be cost efficient, you know? Like this this doesn't trade well against, against anything. Maybe a very low amount of Zerglings in a choke. But you need to start Widow Mine production early. So instead of keeping this on a tank lab, after two tanks, if you realize it's just Ling Bane Muda, or, or just Ling Bane as well, against just Ling Bane you also want mines, you lift this one off, and you build a reactor on it, and then later, when you have the gas, you build a second factory on the tech lab. And the second factory is the one that makes drilling claws. Because yeah, you, you just need mines early. Like, imagine... Imagine, like this This looks like already a decent trade for you, but imagine you have one mine here. He's actually gonna have to split or not look or he will lose an entire clump of links or even worse bailings to just the Widow Mine. Now, what I wanted to say about the drop on the top is that the most important thing against Mudas is actually that you have a counter pressure. Oh, that's, a, that's a cute move. It's, it's the same with mech. If you play mech against Mudas, it's really easy to get pinned down. But you always just have to send your BCs across to create counter damage to force Mutas back. And you can see it, it's doing a good job for you right now. The game doesn't look that good for you because you haven't taken that great trades. This is a very bad resources loss for TVZ. Terran is usually... Uh, in, 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 in 10 minutes, Terran will be like 5k, you know, 3, 4, 5k resources ahead. So the fact that it's slightly in his favor, that, that means you took very bad trades. But the game still looks somewhat alright with your 3-3 three, three coming up. And that's because the Mutas haven't been able to torture you. Sending single drops in particular, try to not uh, send the double meta hacks because if those get picked off it's like 20 supply, it, it, it really adds up. But sending a single drop here will force all the Mutas back while you can push on the bottom or anything like that. And that's, that's the exact way to play against Mutas. If he doesn't send Mutas to this drop, this drop will be able to bounce back, back and forth, back and forth, even go here if he's not looking and take so much attention from the Zerg. So always try. Exactly like this. Like I'm, I'm really happy that you're doing this. Just send a single drop and push somewhere else at the same time. 
like this this is he's up to a high meter count he's rich he's ahead we know that this this doesn't look too bad for him but th this drop could actually do so much damage just because the mutas are not at home it's going to be really annoying for him to deal with he's either going to send everything to this push okay actually a pretty good time micro yeah really good micro there actually i like it now look at this drop where's the mutas the mutas can't clean it up look at the supply we were so much supply down just now and now we're already climbed back just this one drop if, if the mutas are not there that that's what happens he will send links here if you're paying attention you'll just go up into the main there we go that's exactly what you need to do against mutas it's all about that distraction because as you can see look at the supply now i i don't know how much supply we were down like 40 and now it's even basically just just this one drop he, he, he's greedy he sends the mutas anyway he gets he gets screwed always the single drops guys always the single drops and uh plus one for for jf for that single drop unfortunate but definitely did his job so uh, you know I, I wouldn't be too sad about it for sure so you pay attention here oh this might be a bit you look like you stuck around for a little bit too long do we have reinforcements no we do okay so so far this game is uh yeah like the last the last two minutes last one minute and a half that was almost perfectly handled once again your biggest problem here being is that you just don't have widow mines like you had i think one or two widow mines at the front um yeah, it's just your army doesn't have that much power as, as you can see every time you fight like this is from from that drop killing everything pretty much but every time you fight this is still not a good resource loss by the way you, you kind of get owned like this fight here you got owned it's just you, you just need more widow mine production like the, the widow mine production is not high enough and what's really nice about widow mine production as well is look at this base for example there's just there's no spores anymore usually from a fort base on there's no spores in a game where you don't open banshee there may not even be spores at all and if you have a lot of widow mines you can actually uh drop some widow mines as well imagine a drilling claw, a claw drop on this like it's probably gonna kill a lot of drones like drilling claws shoot really fast drilling claw mines they they detonate so fast that he actually needs a super fast reaction to not lose all of his drones to that and then he needs to send the overseer back or make another one in this case he had one here so that's good for him and one thing that i'm missing from john snow in this game and i'm gonna tell you guys how to counter that as well even if we're not seeing it normally zerg does more ling run buys like uh, some bailing run buys and that's where you also really need mines like in a normal game like this i i think i would probably have like 12 widow mines like widow mines build really fast guys if you have this this bad boy in a reactor for uh, a few minutes earlier like you're usually gonna have like eight more widow mines you know so then what you do is you put a widow mine here you always put a widow mine on every path if they're not gonna catch a run by they're gonna shoot a mutas at some point or in the worst case the mutas with an overseer kill it and um you will be aware of where the mutas are and you can send another single drop right so th the widow mine count is very important because right now if you have four if you do, if you would split them at this point then you don't have any widow mines left for the army you don't have widow mines for the drop you don't have widow mines for your attack so it's actually very important to keep that widow mine count up because they have so much use and you actually kind of need them to be honest now this is a, a situation like i said you're you're very low on medevacs for some reason you're making a liberator that's uh, definitely not a good choice when this is your medevac count all, all low always try to have a good amount of medevacs probably at least six against her and uh, this is one of the situations where you would have wanted a single drop you know maybe this path where you were getting attacked by the mutas on the left side now the mutas are going down so you could be sending one the up pattern you know always try to keep using single drops right now just like i said before you're not dropping and he has complete freedom with the mutas like this is really annoying you just kind of have to follow him around every time you go out he's going to go back in so I'll always try to keep some kind of pressure up this is also a pretty good move sending a, a liberator now this is where you would have loved to have this widow mine look, look at that the bailings just rolled in you would have just smashed those bailings and and even this you're like uh, good good reaction you know you're, you're get out M maybe you'll still lose the SUVs because those are fast but um that even this is really annoying like this takes so much of your attention i i didn't look at the fight but 
you know, you click away your, you know how it goes, guys. You you click away your SCVs, and you're not looking for a bit, and then the bailing hits at the front, and blah 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 blah. So just follow the steps and and make sure you're prepared against all of that. Like this is the first run by of the game, and it already did a lot. They got eight SCVs. All your other SCVs went here, so they're oversaturated. We're not mining here. Your push didn't advance because it took your attention at the same time. And now he was able to get Ultras up as well. Once again, uh, single drops are missing here. Widowmine uh, count is finally going up to a decent amount. Now that's good. Thing I'm definitely missing here is uh, more command senders. Like, like I said, he, he, he didn't do that much harassment, right? How many SVs did he kill this game? 21. That's, that's really not a lot for a TVZ. But normally... Like, this base is still not mining. Your your income is actually quite low because you didn't make enough command centers. Now you have to land your base. If you play against Muda style in particular, and I, I always tell this, this is like the strength of, of Terran in the late game. But against Mudas in particular, because you tend to take so much damage from Mudas runbys and stuff, you really want to make more command centers. Like, uh, by now you should have easily been on at least six command centers. I even if you just have a few spare orbitals for mules, that's really good. Now this is the problem with having your attention taken. He was harassing your SCV line at the same time. You didn't look and he, he just squashed your army. Took a really good fight. You were clumped up against Ultra Bane. That's never gonna go well. And who knows, maybe you could have won that fight if you uh, if you weren't distracted, you know. That's why you always need to be prepared. Of course, this was a little bit unfortunate. Uh, just as you were, trans uh, what do you call it? Transiting. Those SCVs, moving those SCVs to the new base. And now what's the hard part is that he is going to be able to take map control with those Mutas again. He, he was a bit sloppy and lost a lot of Mutas. But uh, yeah, especially against Ultras, you kind of want to have like that critical unit count, you know. With just a few bio units, you're usually not going to cut it against the Ultras. So that fight looks like it costs you the game. We're still going to fight for four minutes longer. And you, you do have, well, four bases of base. I was, I was going to say five, but obviously uh, you flew this base away. This looks like a could be a decent fight. Good way to mines. Yeah, good defense, for sure. What's the income like? Yeah, he, has, he, he just got this middle base set up, so that's why you're... Um, this, this base snipe was pretty good, but still, you know. That's actually one thing about Zerg as well, is they, they mine out uh, a bit slower than us on those main bases, so their income is going to stay stable for a long a long time. Like Zerg always expands faster than us, but in the late game I feel like we kind of need to out-expand them. Uh, you still haven't made any command centers, like you, you even made an extra barracks while you're already poor. And yeah, you, you probably should have made another command center still at that point. Like the, the lack of command centers is kind of is kind of strange actually. How many meals did we launch? Two meals. He's suddenly out of income. I wonder what happened there. Maybe it's the long distance mining, I guess. This uh, this is pretty good to do against Ultras, by the way. When you notice there's not a lot of cover, there's no Infestors or Mutas near, you can actually just go here and, and kite the Ultras. This is also... Uh, th this move is only working because the... Um, then are over here. If there's Mutas shooting your Marines all the time while you're doing this, your army's just gonna die. Still uh, still really missing that single drop. Now you actually have a good medevac count. Like, you, you cleared a lot of creep on the left side. On the bottom side, I don't think you cleared a lot of creep anymore, so that would be a bit risky to go to, e even if he doesn't have that much creep. But th this with this Muta thing, he's easily setting you up for another single drop. Like, really try to abuse that Muta movement. Even if you're fighting here, you're hardcore. You can do the exact same kiting while having 8 marines less in this army, right? Because it's most of the marauders doing damage, you're just running back. So once again, the mutas are out of position. Send that single drop. Like, just, just abuse it as much as you can. Oh, you're, you're trading well here, but the mutas did a lot of damage. He did lose almost all of them to the turret, actually. But he did get your command center, which is pretty big. How's the Widow my count? Widow my count not looking that healthy. I feel like you're you're doing a good job here though. You're you're not 
spending too much money transitioning to the late game, you're just making your buy units, making your uh, your widow mines, and trying to trade efficiently with what you have. I think uh, that's a very good way to go about it. I I don't have too much to complain about this, because that's basically what I'm doing, right? I'm I'm complaining. This way should definitely not be able to get up for free as well. Now, there are certain things, as a, as a Wings of Liberty Terran, okay. There are certain things, if you see them, you definitely do not try to go in. And one of them is trying to snipe those investors. That's uh, it's never worth it, man. It's just, just run for your life, okay? If you see investors and you don't have a sick army, just... Just run for your life. Start doing some drops, okay? It's like seeing a disruptor in PvP, you know? You you, you start dropping, you, you don't fight that shit head on. Like, even those fungus on the Medivax, that's actually pretty painful. At some point, if you lose those Medivax, that's actually the core of your army right now. So yeah, honestly, for the, for the most part, I feel like you did it pretty well. I, I'm still really missing the drops. That's the, that's, that's the main thing I'm taking from this game. You, you started off really well with the drops, but at some point you let it slip. Especially with this, you have like... How many buy units is it? Like 14 for 8 Medivax? Like that's so drop. You don't even need more than 3 Medivax here, really. And at this point you're just inefficient. Now his income is, is huge, of course. So it was gonna be hard anyway after that uh, that lost battle over here. This is this is the, the good approach to playing a late game these days, by the way. It's just uh, the expansions are missing, but just making mass buy units with Widow Mines. Uh, that's that's the Korean style to do it. That's what I do as well. It seems like Terran ter late game uh, people don't really play it anymore. You just yeah, you just keep making buy units. You, oh, that's a really good snipe though. I told you not to do it, but that was that was enjoyable. That was sweet. But yeah, this is this is what Terran late game against Zerg looks like these days. We're not going into the Ghost or the Liberators. We're just making more buy units. Uh, the point of this is to mass expand though, like you're, you're not really supposed to lift away all your uh, barracks like that. And GG. Honestly, a pretty good game. I think a lot of positives to take from that as well. Uh, I feel like there were so some basic things missing, like the, the lack of Widow Mines was a really big factor in this game. Uh, the lack of single drops, like you were uh, behind at some point, but the, the lack of drops in the end, I honestly think if you did some really good job dropping, uh, you probably could have got them back into this game. Uh, if there's no creep, it's very easy to drop. If the mutas are out of position, like just don't just blindly do it. Just either you push somewhere and you do a single drop on the other side, or you see where the mutas are and you drop on the other side. You just have to keep that pressure going. You really can't let mutas just own you. Like we saw it in this game, the one time there was a single drop where the mutas were out of position, it completely got us back into the game from a huge deficit. And that's why the Zerg player is going to have to keep those mutas at home. So even if it seems a bit counterintuitive, like there's mutas flying around my base and need to defend, the, the best thing you can actually do against it is keep the pressure on yourself. And with that, I don't mean A of your entire army, but send, send those single drops out, you know, make it hard for them. Pretty nice game though. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this lesson as well. I thought it was really cool to have a, a nice TVZ in there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.